From the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, hanging out in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters tonight. We welcome you to tonight's show, including all of our terrestrial affiliates across North America and digitally on TalkStream Live and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, we have them free for you at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. You can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio for the show, as well as my personal handle at Dave Scott, S-O-R. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's S-O-R Newswire. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by visiting Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. To kick off a brand new month, we always love to be joined by our resident ET expert, as our Keith Andrews is back for the ET Connection. Keith is a lifelong extraterrestrial experiencer who now helps counsel those who've had their own contact experiences, whether for the good or for the bad. Your questions in our chat room will dictate where we go with tonight's show, as per usual. We are also joined by UFO historian William Pullen. The reason Keith is actually still on shift at work And if he gets a call, he's got to run. We can't have dead air. So William's here to hang out with us as well. So hop on the woo train as we are going to see if we could take this off the tracks tonight. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Mr. R. Keith Andrews, we're kicking off another adventurous show tonight with you. How you doing, my friend? Not bad at all. How about you? I am fantastic. And, William, how are the Stan Smith runners, sneakers from 1979 looking tonight? (laughs) They're outstanding, man. Ready for some woo tonight, man. Excellent, excellent. We're going to get there. We are going to get there. So, once again, if you have any questions, if you're in our chat rooms, either on YouTube or on Facebook or Spreaker or Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio or Revolution Radio or LGAP, Type your questions in capital letters. I will get to them to pass over to Keith. Keith, I'm going to start with a little bit different here. I'm going to start with William here on this one. And the only reason why is earlier this week, William, we had UFO videos declassified. And I know you've done a lot of work with your historian research on this. Significant or nothing new? Um, I mean, it's significant that the Pentagon and a branch of the military was open enough to release this stuff to the public, which is not usually what has happened in the past 80, 80 years or so. Usually they keep everything close to the cuff, if we know anything at all. Um, it still shows unidentified objects. We really don't know what's on the video. We know the videos are real. They're legitimate. They're not hoaxed. Um, beyond, that, beyond that, that's all we know. But that's fascinating because on one hand, the videos might contain um, misidentified military apparatus, something earthly, which is interesting in and of itself. But the potential is there for something extraterrestrial. The videos might show something as wooey as a alien spacecraft. That's fascinating to me. Uh, we don't know what is on the video, but the potential is there for something really groundbreaking. So um, it's kind of it's kind of a little of both. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Uh, I'm waiting to see what happens in the months and months and weeks to come. See if anything more comes out of this. But um, it's uh, it's interesting to say the least. Dave. Keith, I want to ask you a question because William and I have gotten into a little bit of a debate over the last week and a half or so. He says UFOs are not aliens. Yet my story about this is when you experience aliens, all UFOs are aliens. What's your well, take on this? I'm, I'm going to give you kind of a backwards answer here, but UFO flat out in and of itself means unidentified flying object. Now, whether you want to call it alien or not, my personal experience is I've never run into a human that was eight feet tall with scales. You know, I've, I've run into a lot of humans and none of them fit that description. Besides that, when I was, when I was a lot younger, um, my the therapist I was seeing at the time, the first positive memory I ran into was off world. Like literally, it was a it was an Earthrise. 
so from my standpoint, it's real simple. All UFOs are certainly not aliens. Oh. Okay, there are a number me. of um, there's a number of vehicles that that the governments have built based on alien technology. And much as we don't identify them, doesn't mean they're alien. But I will tell you, the greater majority of them are, from my experience, are definitively a, of alien nature. William, what do you say about that? Uh, you know, I agree with some of that statement. I do. Because it, by strictest definition, UFO means an unidentified flying object, which means you don't know what it is. If that UFO turns out to be alien, it's not a UFO anymore. You've identified it. it you can't call something identified unidentified. It makes no sense. So a UFO that turns out to be something alien ceases to become a UFO because you can actually label it specifically. Um, and Keith is right. A lot of UFOs are misidentified military apparatus. You know, uh, do I think some UFOs are alien spacecraft? Certainly. Uh, what percentage? I have no idea. But certainly some UFOs are misidentified aircraft of our own design. Whether they're designed off uh, ideas we've uh, gathered from alien technology or not, if we're unable to identify them, they're UFOs. Um, so I'm kind of on the fence both ways. But um, I, it, to my mind, you just can't label all UFOs alien. Uh, they're not. They're not all alien. There are other explanations for them. Uh, but if we can label them, then... I mean, if, if, if I was an experiencer and I saw an alien spacecraft land in my backyard, I wouldn't call it a UFO because it's not unidentified. I would call it what it is, an alien spacecraft. So I'll just leave it at that. What if it was aliens, though, William? Then I would call them aliens. <laughs> oh. I would call them exactly what they are. Yeah. Oh. Uh, because, yeah, if they're alien, I... because if they're aliens, they're not unidentified. And they're not objects. They're aliens. So I would call them exactly what they are. And I, you know, I, I to agree with you there, William. Once you've identified them, they are no longer unidentified. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is where I run into the military alien. Yeah. yeah. If you can, if you can label it, if you find out exactly what they are, then it's it, 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 it makes sense to call them exactly what they are. Whether they're military aircraft, whether they're at least spacecraft, whether they are alien, you call them what they are. You don't call them UFOs anymore. So. Okay. So. Let's get to Goddess Michelle's question on Twitter right here, right now. She is asking, Keith, do aliens have cults? If not, can you direct her to have the alien or direct the aliens to follow her brand new cult? <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, certainly they have, some of them have their own cults. I mean, the reality is a lot of the alien races are very similar in configuration to what humans are. They just have better toys. You know, now, am I going to direct them to follow another cult? Uh, well, categorically, no. I won't, I won't direct humans to follow a cult on Earth, either. I would hope not. I would hope not. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's your thoughts on that? Do you think aliens come down in cultish realms there, William? Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, it's a possibility, I guess, but I, I, I wouldn't think so. But that's that's just strictly opinion. Uh, but I would keep. I mean, I wouldn't direct an alien, uh, whether it's a, it's a single alien or a group of them, to join a human cult. I wouldn't do that with humans either. So I would keep. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't point them in that direction. And and I, I, you can safely assume aliens are more intelligent than we are. They're they're not from around the corner. They have a higher level of intelligence, a higher level of technology. Uh, therefore, would they be more likely to be uh, enamored with joining a cult? Probably not. Uh, they're probably a little farther than that. So, um, yeah. All right, let's get to the next question here from Greco on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. Do any aliens procreate by reanimating the dead of other aliens genetically? Um, that's an interesting way of putting it because once they're dead, you can't procreate the the cell. If they're actually dead, the cells can't can't reproduce. So, from right. at least many races that I've run into. 
All right, Joey, who is wearing his uh, his special bandana for you tonight in our Space Travelers Club on our website, right. is asking, Keith, when are we actually going to see an eight-foot reptilian playing in the NBA? Uh, you probably won't live long enough to do that. Primarily, yeah, that, would, that would change the fundamental nature. And besides that, humans would have to get comfortable enough with the whole concept of alien of alien races to let them into a public setting without everybody panicking. Well, there you go. I mean, let's there face it. People yes. get edged when they see a seven-foot human. We do stare. We are rude that way. We are very rude that way. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on here as we're going to go to Nikki's question. Keith, what do you think of Elon Musk's mass satellite web across the globe, known as Starlink? Um, well, little I'm familiar with. I've heard bits and pieces about it. But the reality is that we have to, you know, we've got to have that kind of technology to get off the planet. You know, to be able to communicate off planet. So having a, a net set up would absolutely work in, in favor of technological advancement, especially given what they're building right now. Very cool. What, what's your thoughts on that, William? Uh, I agree with Keith. You need to step, it's a step forward technologically. You know, it makes sense that we're going to, we're going to somehow find out what's out there or potentially interact with it directly. We need to meet them halfway with our own technology. We just can't wait for them to come to us. So uh, an effort to meet them halfway in space uh, is pretty logical. So um, it's probably a step in the right direction. So uh, there's a lot of stories about this whole scenario that may or may not be true, but the general idea, I think, is logical. All right. In regards to aliens, do you think this is a good thing? Do you think these satellites, Keith, that are up there might help pick up some sort of signal? Well, clearly the answer to that would be yes. It'll help them. The funny part about it is, you know, people complain about Big Brother watching. Well, Big Brother has a much bigger brother. And the satellites do provide that added link for the off-worlders to actually gauge what is going on on the socio on the xenosocioeconomic standpoint. You know, they, Which, they, it lets yeah. them actually gauge how mankind is evolving. All right. Let's continue on here. As, uh, let's see here. Cable Guy Matt is asking, tell us about that click-clack race or whatever they're called. Oh, what? the chick chock. That's the one. Did you say tell you about them? Yeah, he wants to know about them because he heard you mention it. Yeah. Well, the easiest way to get a look at them is to get a look at what they actually look like. Watch the the movie, in the original movie, Alien, starring Sigourney Weaver. They've got a dead ringer except the extendable internal jaw. That fine little pop-out jaw that they've got doesn't exist in, in real life. Other than that, they've pretty much documented them about as well as you can get. They are a, in a lot of ways, they start out as parasites. And it just so happens that humans make very good hosts. Fortunately, there aren't that many of them here. All right, let's move on. Nikki is asking... Can an alien be reanimated, then a soul put into it? Um, reanimated, no. Why? Because what happens when the soul enters, when an actual soul enters the body, it modifies the way the cell works. As soon as that soul leaves, that body, it's kind of like flash frying the entire, the entire um, electrical network on a computer. If you cook the entire electrical system... You can't restart the computer or reprogram it because you got nothing left. All right. KSM in the LGAB chat room wants to know if alien females get grouchy 
and have the same female problems that females on Earth have when it comes to cycles? Um, well, the answer is it depends entirely on which race, but do they have the same kind of, if, they're, if their cycle, if you will, goes offline? Yeah, they do. The biggest difference is with some of them, if their cycle goes offline and they get temperamental, they don't scream at you. They just kill you. It's like you, know, you end up on the dinner table and there is no, it, there's no argument back and forth. Interesting. You know, you, the, the worst case is when you've got it when you've got an egg layer that goes off that goes off track. Because that an egg layer lasts for a while. Who's the egg layers? Most of the reptilians. Most of the reptilians and many of the insectivores. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Let's move on here. Peanut Butter Rolls is asking, Keith, are there any s- sort of special sunglasses out there that can help us see aliens better? Um, not that I'm aware of. Primarily because most aliens are solid corporeal, and therefore, if you see them, you're going to see them in daylight, and we don't have the X-ray, the X-ray goggles to see through a, a starship hull. So you're pretty much hooked. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Being able, William, to pick up a pair of sunglasses and ah, oh, there's a gray, uh, there's one of them clicky clockers, there's a <laughs> yeah. Zarkosian, and there's a you know, there's a mantid, and oh look at that, there's some gnomes over there playing football on the grass. I don't know. Can you imagine that, William? That would be some outstanding technology. <laughs> See, it really would. I mean. It- the the funny part, that. Yeah, funny that, that would be outstanding. Quite often, you can spot the ran, spot the off-worlders, especially if they're if they're on the ground, by looking at what you can't see. You know, it's kind of like if you're looking if you're looking for a for a starship. If you look in the if you look up, and you've got and you've got um, stars that go missing. Okay, what you're looking at, you can tell that there's a ship there because you can't see anything beyond it. All right, let's get to our next question as we continue on. Our Keith Andrews and the ET Connection with special guest William Pullen here tonight. All right, we got about five minutes left at the until we go to break at the bottom of the hour. Nikki is asking, William, do you or Keith, and William will start with you on this one, think... Starlink satellites will protect Earth from aliens flying through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, you know, I would say no, uh, because I, I still firmly believe alien technology is far divide, far in advance of our own. So, if aliens wanted to do anything more proactive, a little more aggressive towards us, I just don't think I don't see any way that our technology would be able to stop that from happening. Uh, I have no evidence to, to support that point of view, but I just think aliens are part of Ezra and species. Interesting. Why do you think that? Uh, because they're not from here. They're either coming from another dimension, another possibly another time frame, or they're traveling physically from some other star system light years away. Uh, those are all things we can't do. Uh, we can barely go to Mars in a few months. We still use uh, internal combustion engines, um, antiquated technology like that. Whereas to reach Earth from a far off realm, whether that's in, in our own universe or not, um, that would take some level of technology that's far in advance of our own. So, um, of course, I could be wrong, but from a very logical sense, th- because they're not from here, they're traveling from somewhere other than our own planet. That would, that would by, by default, demand a level of technology we don't have. So, All right. Keith, what's your thoughts on that? Not a snowball prayer. The fact of the matter is, uh, they, they, you know, William is right. They operate with a much higher technological capacity. And the biggest problem, of course, is that depending on which race, but with the, with the level of race of, of technology that they have in general... 
most of the of the satellites won't even pick them up if they don't want to be seen. You know, because they'll just shift the yeah. shift the vibratory rate and the and the optical inference rate, where human satellites won't see them. Very true. Really. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on here. Let's try and sneak in one more question here before we go to break. At the bottom of the hour, we have a question coming from Mark. Keith, do aliens dwell in our politics? Individuals, the answer would be probably. But are the aliens, which the hiding question is, are they trying to take over? No. They did not come light years to screw up the political system that mankind's already completely butchered. You know, that whole concept of the politics thing comes right out of V from back in the late 70s, early 80s. All right. What are your thoughts on that, uh, William? I know you're not sure if if aliens have actually landed or not, but do you think if they did, hypothetically, or if they have already, do you think they would try and make their way into our political system? I I agree with you. No, I don't think so. No, I mean, they wouldn't travel from wherever they're coming from to try to infiltrate and you know, on some level, make our political system less functional when it's already broken as it is. Uh, I just don't see that happening, though. And what would that? What would their? I mean, what what would aliens gain from that? I mean, with their level of technology, if they wanted to take over the planet, they could do that in a day. I would think they wouldn't. They would. They wouldn't have to go in a roundabout way and take us over through our government. They could do it more directly. So I, I would say no. I agree with you. All right. Well. You know, we have to uh, we have to make sure that we are, uh, you know, prepared for that because you never know. You never know who's calling the shots. And like I said the other night on the show, we are the greatest reality TV show that any alien can watch. Because if I was up there and I was an alien race, I would be viewing Earth, the final frontier coming on up here, gentlemen. But hey, yeah. Oh, I don't even know which channel I would select. I really don't. I really don't. But we'll leave it at that. Our Keith Andrews is here for the ET Connection as he is hanging on out answering your questions in the chat rooms about everything extraterrestrial and supernatural tonight. We also have the man who presses his own khaki pants, our UFO historian, William Pullen, joining us as well. More of your questions in the chat rooms with our Keith Andrews and William Pullen coming up on Spaced Out Radio. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. 
we're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey, everybody. The SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great form for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with T-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble. we're going in hot, real hot. Coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bubblefoot Hot Sauce. Available now at kajans.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be. Open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience has proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Need that weekend supernatural fix? Look no further than Spaced Out Saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com. I'm Stacy Edwards. And I'm John Edwards. Each Saturday night, Stacy and I are going to bring you the best in paranormal, cryptids, UFOs, you name it, and we're going there. It's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you. So tune us in every Saturday night on Spaced Out Saturdays starting at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com. We're taking Sunday nights out of this world on Spaced Out Radio. This is Michael W. Hall, also known as the Paranormal Lawyer. Together, we're going to go on an exciting journey into the unknown. I'm going to bring you some of the best interviews in the paranormal and supernatural to start your new week off on a freaky note. So tune in to Spaced Out Sundays with me, Michael W. Hall, only on SpacedOutRadio.com.
Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Great to have each and every one of you with us tonight. Thank you so much. I want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. The only thing I ask for in return is hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where you can read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Rock out to Bumblefoot. We have a plethora of more features for you as well. Tonight we are talking with our Keith Andrews and the ET Connection. It happens at the beginning of every single month here, and we have a good time uh, just kick off the month talking about aliens and extraterrestrials. We're also joined by special guest William Pullen, our resident UFO historian. We're going to get right back to the audience questions here because we got a lot of them here already. All right, Andrew, over in the UK, thank you for listening over the, and across the pond. He is asking, Keith, are there any human theme parks out in space? In space? No. On different planets? Yes. Playing out in space would be somewhat counterproductive. Tell us about the latest human roller coaster up there. Well, from their standpoint, they see them more as, um, if you will, kids' rides. Right. Even the most, even the most frightening of the of the human of the human um, roller coasters are absolutely a walk in the park from what they from what they work with. Yeah, I mean, usually if you're dealing with a roller coaster, what they end up doing is building a a bit of a suburb uh, a suburb where the roller coaster goes through a a standard human suburb. You know, I do question their their uh, data though. I was I was at one that was and then I swear that the the whole technology from it or not technology but the whole backdrop to it came right out of the fifties. All right, let's move on here. Nathan is asking: Is there an easy way to perceive extraterrestrials when they're around? That I'm aware of, the easiest yeah. way, quite frankly, and this is going to sound completely backwards, but forget you can't see them. That is, by and large, the easiest way to do it. However, is there a, a simple way of doing it from the from the standpoint of what to look for? Um, not that I'm aware of. The trick is to look at the at the train you're looking at and identify whether or not the train is consistent. More often than not, especially if they happen to be wearing wearing camouflage cloaking, they're still going to, in most cases block what's behind them. All right. Well, let's move on here. Mike is asking, and William, uh, we're going to start with uh, Keith on this one, then I want your response on this. This question's from Mike, right. who is asking, Keith, do you believe that the Nazi scientists had access to alien technology with regards to rocket technology and rumors of D-Glock anti-gravity technology? Well, two factors. The answer would be yes, but the thing that really has to be understood is so did every other major government at the time. The okay. reason that they don't use anti-gravity technology is because humans are still convinced that gravity doesn't work the way it does. So, of course, humans couldn't get their brain wrapped around it. But yeah, the the Nazi Germany had absolute access to some of the technology. The thing that they didn't get access to was weaponry. But then the off-worlders have a definitive boundary there where they won't let advanced weaponry show up on the planet. Primarily because it would tilt the balance of power so badly out of sync that mankind that the human race would not evolve properly. Makes sense. Makes sense. Keith, what's your, I mean, uh, William, pardon me, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I've always thought the opposite. I thought no, um, simply because it didn't show up during the war. Um, and if if an extraterrestrial species gave us some technology, if, if the dialogue reports 
are valid, and they suggest that there's some level of time travel technology attached to that craft. Uh, so in and of itself, it wouldn't be a weapon. But that would use adopting the ability to travel back in time and change the outcome of the war. Uh, but that hasn't happened. So, um, like, so I guess it's not, it's not a definitive, though. But I would think with someone in charge of the Nazi party like, like Hitler was, who was kind of out of control, um, we would have seen something directly uh, that would suggest that kind of technology. Uh, but we haven't yet. So um, that's kind of where I stand on that. Well, you touched right. on something that is, is kind of intriguing, goes completely left center, but what the heck. The concept of time travel going back in time doesn't work. Going forward works, but you can't go back. That's a very long com- conversation to explain that one properly. But you can't make a, a return trip, you know, and head back in time to correct something. All right, let's move yeah, on that, that, here. That, I'm not aware of that, so. Let's move on here. G-Girl is asking, do angels interact with aliens, or are they the same type of being, Keith? They are angels themselves, or angelics in all fairness, are another race. And do they interact with, with other aliens? Absolutely. You know, not usually in the same capacity that they, that they do with humans, but they absolutely interact with them. Makes sense. Oh, okay. On YouTube is asking, what creatures are living in the center of the Earth? William, well, you want to take so this one because I know you're a big believer in that, or no? Uh, no, uh, I would say no. Uh, well, well, let me say um, we found life forms that can live at high temperatures. Could there be life forms living at the center of the Earth with molten, with thousands of degrees? Uh, you can't categorically say no. Uh, we've never gone down there to look. So it's a possibility, but advanced creatures with a technology, with a society uh, having developed, I, I would say no to that. All right, Keith, your thoughts. What creatures well, are living at the center of the, of the earth? Yeah, most of the races that are there are what humans call mythological beings. You know, the one three, what you run into, and you are right, by the way, William, at the center of the earth, although there are races, they do not have, like, right at the core, um, they don't have technology as mankind knows it. You know, but there are, there are races, on, see, because there's a secondary set of continents underneath, underneath this one. You know, which is the neat part about it. But their technology, most of their technology, in all fairness, is of a much more primitive nature. But it's it's the ability they've got to tap into other forms of energy pattern that make them a dangerous race. All right, let's move on here. Andrew in the UK is asking if some aliens are real dirty bastards. Um, pardon my, pardon my obtuseness, but I'd have to understand a little more about what he's calling dirty. All right. I'm going to say flirtatious, interested in human sexuality. Oh, absolutely. Dirty. 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 Absolutely there are. And oddly enough, Star Trek, the original series actually nailed it down right quick like. The Orions are very interested in, in human interaction. All right. You know, and I'm talking about from the from the first hand side. Mobians are are basically as interested in it as humans are. But then Mobians are human anyway. All right. Greco is asking on Twitter Are any of Earth's mythological creatures actually aliens? Um, by, by definition, the answer would technically be no. Um, and what I mean by that is when you take a look at, 
when you take a look at the 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 oldest of the of the mythological races was technology it was technically alien what people call elves because of the fact they were built here to start with but what animated them wasn't from earth you know what what essentially activated them was that in and of itself by nature was an alien race but the mythological creatures themselves once they were built or once they were once they evolved evolved here like for instance the chitawari which are a reptilian race that evolved in it evolved in africa not alien just not human gotcha all right let's move on here cable guy matt is asking are the royal family reptilians i think he's been watching a little bit too much david ike yeah. 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 No. Yeah. That's just a categorical that that is directly tied to V. And no, the the royal family is about as human as it gets. A little twisted on occasion, but definitively human. Well, at least he cleared that up. What do you, you know, William, I know you are very much about trying to to bring in some proper etiquette to the UFO field, if that's even possible. What do you think when you hear things like that? It muddies the waters. I mean, there's, there's some, there's a vast number of questions we don't have the answers to. There's a lot of fascinating stuff that deserves to be looked at um, and, uh, and not laughed at. But there are some things that we can kind of definitively say no to. And the the question of the royal family being reptilian, that, that's kind of a straightforward no. Um, regardless of your viewpoint, whether you more uh, you, whether you're enamored with the science or the woo or or some some semblance between those two extremes, this is all fascinating stuff. Uh, there's no need to make up anything up. There's no need to embrace the whole thing to realize that this is a fascinating topic um and the possibilities are endless but there are some things that uh there are some questions that are answered by simple no and the royal the royal the royal scenario of them being reptilian is one of those questions that we know all right let's go to julie's question as we continue on with the et connection with our keith andrews and special guest william pullen julie is asking Keith, do you know where the brilliant white beings are from by any chance? If they are the ones I think you're referring to, they're actually from the far side of the Palladian star system by another star system. Actually, two. But, um, Issa, and do I know the name of the planet? No. But essentially, uh-huh. go, to, go to the Pleiades and carry on. All right, let's continue on here. Cedric is asking, do aliens have psychic powers above the third dimension, Keith? No. Categorically, everything in existence here, everything that shows up in in humankind's existence is third dimensional. Now, that being said, do, do some of the, of the off-worlders have senses that go beyond the standard five? Absolutely. Standard five right. being sight, taste, touch, that sort of thing. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right, let's go back to Twitter to Greco here, who is asking, Keith, can you tell us a story about a recent experience you had with aliens that went wrong? <laughs> well, it depends on your definition of recent. Um. I mean, the, one of the most recent one that went very wrong was actually about five years ago at this point. I woke up in the morning. Well, I woke up and I come out of it and it, it was with a dead scream it to the point of waking up everybody in the house. And the the short the short answer was I woke up with my with my right shoulder completely dislocated. 
I've still got the notes from that encounter. Because it was very much a, and that was a, an interaction with the Wara. Which we mentioned before, those are the ones that look very similar to, very similar to Bigfoot. Longer arms and a whole lot worse te temperament. But I ended right. up in a conflict that day, and, well, I paid the price for it. Oh, we all did. We all did. All right, let's get to another question from Greco, who is asking, Have you seen what humans evolve into millions of years from now? Perhaps the aliens showed you. Well, that's the funny part. Have, have I had discussions and seen extrapolations? Yes. Have I been there to see it? No. For that matter, neither have they. Aliens don't come back from the future to kind of tell us what's going on because you cannot travel backwards in time. Nobody can. Okay, and there is a way to explain that. It's just it's easier with pictographs. All but right. Aliens or aliens, humans will evolve to the point of having full access to the to physical manifestation capability. As in, think about something and have it manifest in your hands. What do you I think, agree. William? I agree. We, uh, humans are always evolving. We have not reached... You know, evolution doesn't stop. Evolution is driven by environmental factors. Uh, we're clearly still evolving. Our physical, our mental abilities are increasing with time. So... The longer we don't blow each other up in a nuclear holocaust, if that doesn't happen, uh, given enough time, we'll be more and more advanced. And abilities we think are wooey or out of the realm of possibility now will become commonplace at some point. As to when, I have no idea. But um, yeah, evolution dictates that we're going to be we become more and more advanced the longer we're alive as a species. So yeah, that's kind of what's going to happen. All right, let's move over to Brudos's question here. So we've got about five minutes to go before we go to break at the top of the hour. Our Keith Andrews, ET Connection, with special guest as well. Joining us, William Pullen, our UFO historian, who also wears knee-high socks with his tennis runners. Appreciate that. All right, Keith, Brudos is asking, it seems to me reptilians wouldn't be very good parents. Do they practice population control? What traits do they value? Well, now, that is a very good question. Now, do they make very good parents? Quite frankly, yes. Now, we'll stick with the, with the Sazazian just so we've got a stable point. But number one, honor and respect is absolute critical. Okay, do they do they practice population control? Yeah, if they got too many kids, they eat them. Which, you know, quite frankly, is a little brutal from human mankind's standpoint, but it it does work. But they don't have like with these Rosazians and for that matter with the Teclec, they they actually never know who their actual parents are. So it's they are both raised in a commune style setup. Where the entire community is responsible for the for the raising of the kids. Makes you know, sense. Our, great parents from the standpoint of yeah. you know of instilling the the respect and the honor side of things. All right, let's move on here. April, who's now in May, is asking. Yeah. Is is uh, is light gravity in reverse no photons and gravitons are two very different and very different particles and simply put operate on very different they they operate on the same print on the same rules if you will but they have two very different functions William what do you think Agreed. Yeah, two two different particles. They they interact with each other. They can influence Absolutely. each other. I mean, light is light's affected directly by gravity, vice versa. Uh, especially light with gravity. 
uh, but they're two different particles that describe two different forces in nature. So, um, but under certain circumstances, uh, to the untrained eye, uh, these particles can seem to interact in a way that might suggest they're the same thing or different aspects of the same thing. But no, they're they're totally different particles describing totally different uh, uh, as, uh, attributes of nature. Absolutely. I mean, the reality is that gravitons do give off a light wave. That being said, photons also give off a gravitational wave. Makes sense. All right, let's sneak in another one here. So we've got about two minutes here. And this one comes from Nathan. Can you pause yourself to the timeline? Pause now, emerge in the future? Um, technically, that's not pausing. But can you jump forward in time? Yes. That you can absolutely do. What ends up happening is all record of you stops in the, in the here and now. And there's no trace of you until you resurface. Conversely, you can't do that in backwards. So if you go into the future, you're not coming back to tell anybody. All right, let's sneak in one more question here from Corinth, who is asking, are there any aliens who actually prefer to mate with humans over their own species? Not that I'm aware of. William, you want to take this one? Because uh, you're kind of alien-looking, my friend. Uh <laughs> I'm not, not that I'm aware of either. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I was I was going to go back to a question that came up a few minutes ago about the reptilian being good parents. You know, reptiles here on Earth, a lot of reptilian species are good parents. So, if there's reptilian species that are more advanced out of the universe, it's kind of logical to think that they would also be um, along those lines. It would be good parents. So that's interesting. There's an analogy there with nature here on Earth, but preferring to mate or have sexual interaction with another species as opposed to their own? I, I have no idea. But I, I would I would think not. I would think, you know, a species would tend to be attracted to their own kind. Uh, unless that species is not that different from us. Like, uh, would an insectoid want to mate with a human? I, I have no idea. I would think it would tend to not want to do that. But a species that looks more humanoid may want to. Because the difference is not right. so drastic. Right. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to get you to hold on here because we got to go to break. At the top of the hour, we have the ET Connection with our Keith Andrews. We kick off almost every month with Keith hanging on out, talking all things alien. Our special guest, William Pullen, UFO intrepid historian. Your questions coming up after the break for our Keith Andrews ET Connection. feeling a little spicy tonight what to do what to do why not get bumblefoot four million scoville units of pure hard rock bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors the burning bumble tone it down a bit with bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything spice it up bumble me baby bumblefoot hot sauce get it today at kajans.com we are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Hey everyone, I'm John Edwards. And I'm Stacy Edwards. Together we're taking over Saturday nights on Spaced Out Radio where we're going to bring our own experiences of the paranormal and talk to the best people we can find to help bring you answers to your strange tales. We're here to entertain your need for weekend. Woo! So tune us in at spacedoutradio.com starting at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern where we can all get a little spooky together. Spaced Out Saturday nights right here at spacedoutradio.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache. 
so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spaced.radio.com. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hi, this is Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. Hi there, this is the Paranormal Lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the Paranormal Lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up? All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the story you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best-rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Are you an experiencer of something strange that can't be explained? 
Do you want help finding out what's going on? I'm Ryan Stacy, head of the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We've teamed up with Spaced Out Radio to investigate cases filled out in the SOR Sightlines report. We are independent, and there's no cost to what we do. All we need is your experience. Let's find out what's happening together on the SOR Sightlines report. Hey, space travelers. This is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Hour number two of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for being with us. We want to welcome back everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates across the continent and on the digital side on Revolution Radio and Talk Stream Live. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Uh, Stevadorage. Stevadorage is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot, reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire, and much, much more. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio for the show, as well as my personal handle, at Dave Scott SOR. We got our Keith Andrews. He's back with the ET Connection, answering all your questions revolving around extraterrestrials. You have to be in one of our chat rooms. Don't forget to put your question in capital letters so I can read it easily to our guest. Also, we are joined by our UFO historian, William Pullen, who's hanging on out with us. Gentlemen, welcome back. We're going to start off in the Space Travelers Club with Joey's question. And he is asking, Keith, do you know the actual reason the Roswell crash happened? Was alien foul play involved? Well, if we call alien foul play as in somebody shot the thing down, yeah. I mean, ultimately, that's what it boiled down to. Do understand that we're not using external explosives. You're dealing with a with a electrical field that shorted the system out. Do you think that, that had to the, do with the radar? Had to do with, did you say, did it have to do with the radar? Absolutely. Like the radar uh, in Nevada. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, in other words, was it human-based? No. Um, the radar picked it up, certainly, but the problem was an extra, was a conflict off-world. This is okay. why I keep telling people that much as, as off-worlders have better technology they still are very similar to humans in a lot of ways you know they still got their conflicts if they had it all right there wouldn't be wars going on out there all right i know william you want to say on this because you love roswell oh yeah well you know first we need to say a happy birthday to the late dr jalen hunter he was born on this date may 1st of 1901, I think. Um, Very cool. I probably got the year wrong, but Jay would do his birthday. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Keith. You know, they're, they're, aliens are working with the same physical laws that we are. Uh, their technology is under the same duress, under the same kind of stresses. There are technologies under. We work with the same laws. They're far more advanced than we are, but they're still restrained by the same physical laws. Um, uh, and and as far as the radar thing, I've never, I've never thought the radar. They, if they were being tracked on radar, I'm I'm comfortable with that. If our military was was aware of these things, but radar for all intents and purposes is a glorified radio beam. And I can't imagine that. Yeah, I mean we're we're broadcasting a radio tonight. Will this radio beam bring down the extraterrestrial spacecraft? I, I wouldn't think so. I mean it's it's a radio beam. 
which is a relatively harmless uh, being in the universe. Uh, so I don't, I don't think it was right whatsoever. But I, I mean, I've seen no data to be able to definitively say what uh, brought the Roswell crash down. But um, I, I mean, it, it had to be something pretty substantial because you're dealing with something that's highly technological, highly advanced. So um, right. something as mundane as radar wouldn't, be, wouldn't do it. All right, yeah, let's move on. Radar. Radar. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, the, the cyclic radar rate of the radar is way too low. But the same kind of, of wavelength, if you modify the the spacing on it, can cause a can cause a disruption in the electrical field that they operate with. Yeah, that's a possibility, but we don't I mean, I, I don't know that. So all right, let's move on here. Shanna loves a good mustache on a man. So she is asking, Keith, which alien species have the best mustaches, and how can she get in contact with them? Literally speaking, the best ones are not actually alien. They're ancient race. You would know them as dwarves, and they are depicted extremely well throughout literature. They, and as far as how to track them down, you need to be one heck of a spelunker. You, know, hey, you better get that gear. Get down to inner hollow earth there, Shanna. Ultimately, yes. I mean, you will run into a few of them on the surface. You, you get the occasional one that will surface. Right, but not very often. All right, let's move on here. Corinth is asking, do aliens think humans smell bad in general? Um, not given what I mean, some races do, absolutely. But there are others that make that make humans smell like a rose garden. Of course, there are some races, and some races, in all fairness, that make a cesspool smell like a rose garden. Here's a cool question from Chris. He is asking, how would the consortium of aliens find a landing site if I'm going to build one? Will they buy spice? I'm not quite certain what the last part of that, man, but... I don't know either. I just read the questions, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> as long as we're all in the dark. Needless to say, they take a look at... at viable and the viable approach rate um, vector on it figure out what the odds are of somebody else you know of humans creating a problem if they were to land i mean you've got to be looking at things at a security level that is so far above human can in order to make it safe per se because a static a static landing point has to be, they've got to be able to protect. It's not so much protecting the aliens from the humans as protecting humans from the aliens. All right. Let's move on here. Robert is asking, which alien species are the most benevolent? Debatably, the Pleiadians. They are absolutely neutral healers. Okay, I mean, they are now... Then the Pleiadians, you'll never find a purebred Pleiadian on Earth. But they are probably one of the most benevolent. The The plus side is that, that um, the Serzazians, being a seven and a half to eight and a half foot reptilian race, are allies. So you might consider them on the, on the benevolent side. All right, let's move over to Twitter here, where Greco is asking, what aliens taste better alive rather than cooked medium well with a squirt of lemon on top? <laughs> it's amazing how many times we go there. <laughs> that really does depend entirely on taste bud. Yeah, I mean, if you think okay. about it, you know, because depending on who you talk to, you know, depending on which of the races you talk to, humans can come across can can be found to be extremely extremely um, 
stringy with way too much fat to them. And all the lemon juice in the world isn't going to matter. Got you. All right, let's move on. Overbuilt is asking, would you ride a Centaur if it liked you and you asked nicely? William, let's get your opinion on this. Hmm. Uh, you know, I, I'm always I'm always entertained the thought that if I had the experience with an alien and they offered me a ride, I'd go at a moment's notice uh, to explore the unknown. Um, yeah, be that as it may, I mean, some of the abduction reports are a little troubling. <laughs> Seems to suggest yeah. that there's some there's some there's some interaction going on there that's not not the nicest thing going on. Uh, but there are other reports where that's not happening. At all, and there's no uh, there's no malevolent interaction going on. So, I guess you would take a chance if that would happen. But I, I would still want to go. I mean, I've lived my entire life on this little blue ball. I've never gone in outer space, so it would be an experience of a lifetime. Especially with the same, because they're not from outer space. Centaurs are an ancient race. But All right, let's. Okay, go on, Keith. Yeah, their their method of coming into existence was a whole different aspect. All right, let's move on here. Hot Tub Eve is asking: Would aliens give you a call or an email before they come? Just kidding. Don't ask that. Well, too bad I did. <laughs> Hot Tub Eve. But then she goes on to say, "But they know the info, right? So why call first? Do you have to invite them?" first keith in my case i just leave the door open at this time but when it started no there was no invitation involved you know when i started because i started off on the abduction side of it with a whole lot less than enjoyable side of things all right moving on moving on we got lots of questions okay big cat is asking Keith, do you believe the moon has or had inhabitants? Yes to both. You're going to love this one because it's also got a low-grade atmosphere. What do you think about that, William? Uh, it's, it's within the realm of, realm of possibility. Because despite what the general public believes, the moon does have a tenuous atmosphere. It's not that thick. It's nothing like Earth or or a Titan, but it's a very thin layer of air on the Moon. So um, it wouldn't be able to sustain human life. But we don't know what kind of air pressure other life forms demand. So a life form that would have the ability to live under extremely low pressure atmospheric conditions, like on the Moon, if it's evolved to live under those conditions, then it's a possibility. Yeah. You know, I'm really going to say thank you, William. You are the first person that has corroborated that with any sense of, of shall we say, intellect. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I mean, science has proven that the moon has an atmosphere. A lot of other moons do, too. So uh, the thing I'm troubled by scientists, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, Dave, I'm going to rant against science here, if you better pay attention, is that I keep hearing this statement, why does we know it? Life as we know it. Well, we know the life here on Earth. We don't know the possibilities beyond the boundaries of our own planet. Therefore, our thinking needs to not be so stunted like that. We need to be open-minded enough, not to open the debris ball down, but have enough, an open-minded look and say, you know, there are other environments out there. There are other planets and moons out there that may have different atmospheres, different gases, different pressures, where life forms evolve under those conditions that couldn't live here on Earth, but possibly could on another moon. But if we restrict our thought to life as we know it, that's kind of not good enough. Okay, Dave, I'm done. <laughs> All right. I Sergeant, agree with you more. Go. All right. Sergeant is asking, William, we'll go with you on this one. Are you familiar with biocentrism? If so, what are your thoughts? I'm not overly familiar with it. So I don't want to make a, a negative statement about it. So and I'll let Keith take this one. Yeah. Okay, Keith. Well, 
I'm presuming, and I, I sort of have to, presume, have to make an assumption that when he's referring to biocentrism, he's referring to the stabilization between the between bioorganisms. And if they're using that as a way of of uh, quantifying different different life forms, they're going to run into a problem. Because the, the the word itself seems to infer that. All right, moving on. Mark is asking, Keith, do aliens have any thoughts on COVID-19? COVID-19! <laughs> well, number one is, does it exist? The answer is yes. Is it dangerous to humans? You bet. Is it something that should be taken seriously until such time as Humans actually understand it. Absolutely. The whole problem with it from their standpoint is humans have it, have it in their head that the money is the big thing and they're missing the whole way, the whole reason for isolation. And for them, it's real simple. If you've got something that the, that the indigenous life has qualified as a pandemic, They've had it on, on ships and on their own planet where, they, where the government says, we have a pandemic. And everybody goes, oh, that means we're all in trouble. And the whole concept of rights just goes right out the window. You know, they, they kind of look at it going, well, the right to, to breathe is much more important than the right to walk around free. All right. Julie is asking, do you believe RH negative blood has any connection with anything extraterrestrial, Keith? Absolutely. Depending on the depending on the experiment they're doing or the research they're doing, they may well go after RH negative or RH blood. Same as it may go after O type blood or A negative. It is simply another blood type they work with. It is not predisposed somebody for abduction. All right, makes sense, I guess. Robert is asking, are cats really a species of alien? No. How was that for a short answer? <laughs> Agree. Oh, are you kidding me? They are just, of course they're aliens. Of course cats are aliens. I mean, they have an attitude. There's no question there. They are a terrestrially evolved mammal. With an attitude. I love the way I heard a, a flat earther put it one day, or a, a guy against flat earth. He goes, the earth can't possibly be flat, because if it was, the cats would have knocked everything off it already. Exactly. Agreed. April <laughs> is asking, do reptilians hybrid procreate with humans, Keith? There is a hybridization program that is in place where and where reptilians and humans are cro are cross connected, are spliced, if you will. But that hybridization program was built by the Greys. So yeah, they they certainly do, but not the way that she is, seems to be inferring. It is not a natural. Um, it's not a natural process. All right, makes sense. Greco on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio wants to know, Keith, what has being and hanging out with aliens all these years taught you? Well, the one thing is, it doesn't matter what somebody looks like. Their behavior is, by and large, that's the thing you have to look at. And it categorically wiped out the concept for me of... Of the of worrying about whether humans are are white, black, brown doesn't matter. You know, it it really takes the whole idea of racism and throws it right out the window. I think that's right. basically one of the big things. All right, let's move on here. This is a good question, William, for you from Mark. What do you think of ancient aliens shows? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about a show. The Siri, the Siri, I think, has some validity. In other words, I, I find the show as a well-produced 
uh, series of rants about this theory that may or may not only water. But just the theory itself, uh, my point of view is that, I mean, has the alien visitation taken place? I firmly believe it has. Did it happen in the ancient past? Possibly. We don't know, but possibly. Would aliens have influenced if our ancient, our ancient ancestors directly or indirectly? Possibly. And would that have showed up in our societal developments, in our technology, in our buildings? Possibly, too. So I, I, uh, the theory itself, I think, is interesting and maybe valid. Uh, but I'm, I'm not comfortable with I, I really don't watch any shows that are UFO-related, like Ancient Aliens or Project Blue Book. I tend to stay away from that. But I, but I do agree that the theory may be, may be true. All right. Uh, let's move on here. Stu is asking, have you ever, Keith, had to wear an Earth suit while dealing with aliens here on Earth to protect yourself? And which species was it? An Earth suit, a suit on Earth? No. A protective suit on the home world of, of the Thrasazians, absolutely. As a matter of fact, on theirs, it's actually a, what people would call an amplification suit. On Earth, I can wear what I please. The aliens, on the other hand, some of them have to wear a suit to simply get around on this planet. But on the on the Thrasavian homeworld, you have to wear protective gear. Because if you step outside, I mean, we know what sandstorms here are like. On their homeworld, a sandstorm here and there will strip a human to the bone in less than a minute. You know, if you're not wearing a suit. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay, I, I'm not sure. We'll try and squeeze a quick one in here. Peanut Butter Rolls wants to know, are Scientologists mind-controlled aliens? Keith? Categorically, no. Misguided, you bet. But they are not controlled by by the off worlders I haven't well, looked at the of sense there. Scientology itself. But I do right. know the, that from the off-world standpoint, it's an extreme no-no to interfere to that degree. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to get you to hold on right there. Our Keith Andrews and the ET Connection is back for another edition, and we're going to continue with your questions on Spaced Out Radio right after this. And we say thank you for William Pullen, our resident UFO historian, for hopping on in with us tonight. It's made it a lovely treat as well. Don't forget, <laughs> he does give tennis lessons down in Texas if you want to learn how to play the great game on the court. More Spaced Out Radio right after this. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. We're taking Sunday nights out of this world on Spaced Out Radio. This is Michael W. Hall, also known as the Paranormal Lawyer. Together, we're going to go on an exciting journey into the unknown. I'm going to bring you some of the best interviews in the paranormal and supernatural to start your new week off on a freaky note. So tune in to Spaced Out Sundays with me, Michael W. Hall, only on SpacedOutRadio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, 
We are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Hello, Space Travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience has proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Need that weekend's supernatural fix? Look no further than Spaced Out Saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com. I'm Stacy Edwards. And I'm John Edwards. Each Saturday night, Stacy and I are going to bring you the best in paranormal, cryptids, UFOs, you name it, and we're going there. It's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you. So tune us in every Saturday night on Spaced Out Saturdays starting at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble f- We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajons.com. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today.
We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time. Hey, I want to remind all of you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, give us a a little bit of a like and a subscribe on our YouTube channel. That's where we store our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Our website, spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire and much more. Follow us on Twitter for the show at spaced out radio and my personal handle at Dave Scott SOR. We are talking with our Keith Andrews and UFO historian William Pullen, our special guest tonight for the ET Connection. We're letting you guys ride it out in the chat rooms tonight. So if you're listening on our terrestrial stations, get a hold of us on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. Join our chats either on YouTube, Spreaker, Facebook. We got a number of places that take that. Revolution Radio, you name it. El Gab, there we go. It's all there, all there for you. Check it on out. We appreciate it. Joey has a question in our chat room on the SOR Space Travelers Club. William, this one's for you. The 21st Space Wing of Cheyenne Mountain tested a new landing pad on March 5th. Do you have any reports that this pad is not for landing CH-47 helicopters, but for landing something coming from space? I don't have any info on that. Uh, but it's been suggested that might be the case. Um, on some level, it makes sense, but we don't know it definitively. So, but it's but it's quite the pad, quite the establishment of what we've heard. So, um, I'll leave it at that. All right. Holy cow, Keith! You just walking out of the bathroom there, or what? Kind no, I just opened it. the door because my temperature is starting to spike, which is a bad sign. All right, let's get to Zach's question. Keith, why can aliens breathe on Earth, or can they? Most of them can breathe on Earth because it's oxygen. You know, there are some that don't breathe oxygen. Pleiadians, for instance, can't survive on Earth, period. You know, Pleiadians would be dead within minutes of of getting into Earth's atmosphere itself. Which is why you will never see one see a purebred on Earth. All right, let's move on here. Mala Keith is asking, how many alien species are there that we know of? Well, the we, I don't know. <laughs> From my standpoint, I've heard of as many as 2,500. I've got 69 in the one book, and right now I think I'm up to about 29 in volume two that I've got documented. William, Mark is asking, if aliens allowed you to travel in space, would you go? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) That says all right there. Yes, sir. Why would you go? You wouldn't be scared? To experience something. I want to be scared, sure. I mean, but I want to go to experience something other than Earth. I've lived my whole life on this planet. So I want to see something I've never seen before. So the opportunity to go travel out in space in a in an alien spacecraft and interact with extraterrestrial, that's an opportunity of a lifetime. So, yes, I would be scared to death, but you got to go. got to go. All right. It's- Cable Guy Matt is asking, Keith, are you allowed to bring someone with you during an abduction? Am I personally? In yeah. 57 years now, almost 57, I have had one case where somebody actually went with me. You know, and it's only been the one. There have been a lot that have asked, and only one way. I shouldn't say that there's been two that were taken. Okay. But on the whole, it's not so much a, a question of allow, because frankly, I don't invite people. Oh. Pick me up, man. Pick me up. Come on, I'm right here. <laughs> you, know, I you, keep you, 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 me, and uh, Pullen here, we're going to go for, let's go for a ride somewhere. Steal a craft. Take a ride. Yep. Go. That might be, an, uh, might be a bad idea. Stealing the craft, I mean. Yeah. Well, 
Hey, if they, chase us, if they chase us around the universe, well, it's been a fun ride, don't you think? Let's move on here. Brutus is asking, who inhabited the planet where the asteroid belt is now? Was it Bigfoot? No, Bigfoot evolved on Earth. It wasn't the war either. Um, the the he, he's referring to the Kuiper Belt that's out there, or is he referring to the one that is? I don't know if it's called the Kuiper between between Jupiter and and Earth. I would assume well, the it's the Kuiper Belt. belt. Yeah. The asteroid belt. Yeah, yeah. some people some people call that one Krypton. I don't have a name for it. That being said, I suspect it was probably a Martokian outpost. Damn Martokians. All right, let's move on here. Shanna is asking, and it's not a mustache question this time. <laughs> with, with which aliens do I have the best chance of flying a saucer? Um, Hollywood? <laughs> oh, sad to say give her, give her a break here come on hook her up with some some Zarkeesians or something I uh, no. well the problem with the Zarkeesians is quite frankly she couldn't she doesn't have the strength for it the best bet would say would simply put the either well the best bet really would be the Mobians because they are. Mobians are former Terrans. All right. Makes sense. Let's move on here. PBR is asking, Keith, when was the last time you were abducted? About three days ago. Oh, what happened? Tantalized. Well, that was an issue of they were having a, a bit of a disagreement between a couple of, of their races they were, that needed straightening out. That they didn't really want them straightened out by open con by open war. Makes sense. Techlex were getting just a tad a tad testy, and frankly, we're making a bid to try and move in and move in on the on the Chitwari on Earth. All right, cable guy Matt is asking: Is there a cat race out there? Yes. There's actually two of them. The Laborian are one. It is the one right off the bat. I'm just trying to think what the heck the other one. Oh, there is a, a form of one breed, breed, if you will, or one race of the lichen are also a feline race. You know, but right. those are the two most common. Peanut you butter know, rolls is asking. Oh, sorry, Keith. Go ahead. Yeah, the if you like, if you read Larry Niven, he wrote a story about the Kazinti, which are essentially based on the lichen. But those are your, those are your two main ones as far as feline go. All right, let's move on here. Peanut Butter Rolls is asking, is there a common dinner that you eat before you get abducted? No. Heck, there isn't a common dinner that I eat. Yeah, it really boils down to I eat whatever I please, and then I see what happens. Nathan wants to know... All right, Nathan wants to know, how do we naturally affect zero-point energy? How can I right now demonstrably do this? William, do you want to do that? Do you want to take that one? Mm. You like a little zero-point oh, energy in your life? I, I could take it. Out. I would say, I don't know. <laughs> I have no answer for it. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I apologize. I don't know. Oracle answer. Keith, yeah. you got something yeah, for that? very easy way to, to tap into it if you take your hands and it doesn't matter who's listening take your hands and put them palms towards each other about a quarter inch apart and you'll feel an energy between them now I've heard it described a lot of different ways but understanding that energy runs both directions at the same time by concentrating on it you can get an energy field running between your hands 
that is zero point energy. Okay, and it is that energy that is used when people talk about healing by touch or more to the point, energy healing. It's gotcha. also the same energy that is used for doing for doing psychokinetic work. What most people call telekinetic. But that's the easiest way to demonstrate it. Star A is asking, do aliens like human internet or entertainment? Um, in all fairness, for mm. most of them, no. You'll get the occasional the occasional history buff that gets a kick out of it. But on the whole, it's it's more akin to how many humans like watching the old the old black and whites? You know the old silent movies from the time of Charlie Chaplin. You know you're talking about watching antiquated technology, and the majority of them do not. All right, let's move on. Brutus is asking, where are the secret bases located at? I'm going to assume it in space. Or on Earth, I guess. We'll, we'll throw them both in there. What the hell? Well, I'm going to point blank tell you I'm not saying a word. Come <laughs> on! Give it up, Andrews. Come on! Yeah, well, I was thinking of that and then decided that termination is not high on my list of priorities right now. Mm. No, come on, William. Give him a, give him a groan there. Mm. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Well, you know, there's Appreciate legends that. of an underground base under Gulf of New Mexico. There's there's legends of a base which we've kind of known about uh, underground base in uh, Utah, uh, kind of northeast of Area 51. Uh, I'm assuming he meets underground bases. Um, so there's a lot of talk about that, and there are underground facilities that a lot of well-known bases, uh, you know, Groom Lake, Wright Carson Air Force Base. All these places have underground facilities, which by definition would be secret. So, um, beyond that, I don't know. I'm just a civilian, so. All right. Stephanie is asking, Keith, what is your favorite crystal? My favorite Moldavite. Why? Well, because it is the only gem quality, non-terrestrial gem. And it, I literally use it in combination with smoky quartz to stabilize my own energy so I actually can function properly. Makes sense. Makes sense. How about you, William? Do you believe in the whole crystal thing? I was just going to say crystal gale, but, you know, that's a singer, so, yeah. Well, good she got nice hair. Your hair is almost as she long does. as hers. It's getting there. <laughs> it's getting there. So, yeah. That's the mission here. Yeah. You pull Perfect. data and hair growth. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Nikki is asking. By, by the way, mine is Soda Light. And if you're watching me on YouTube tonight, you actually see on my microphone, I actually have Soda Light on my microphone. So that is something that. I carry around. All right. Angel, or pardon me, Nikki is asking, Keith, what exactly, who, pardon me, what and exactly who are the original ancient aliens who seeded this planet? Well, technically, well, literally, the Zerziks are the ones that came here. The first corporeal race that was here is what you and you, what humans know as the Elfid race. Or the elf race, if you will. They were the first ones that got here. But mankind, the other, the hidden question there is who made man? Right. Man was not seeded from another planet. It was built here. Mm Mm-hmm. I hear you there. Okay. I am moving on here. Let's go over to Twitter where Greco is asking, is there an intergalactic version of our television shows? What do you know about that? An intergalactic version of them? Yeah. Like, do they copycat our, our entertainment, like our movies, our television shows, anything like that? 
Um, off-worlders on the whole have a very different sense of humor than what humans do, or of entertainment for that matter. Number one, when one of the big things is like when we have when humans have recreations of war movies, and they and humans call them action movies, right? So what many of the off-world races do, if they're going to film it and broadcast it at all, it's not like they turn it into a movie. What they do is they go to a war zone and they broadcast it. You know, nice. Now, granted, you don't get repeat actors in in a case like that. All right. But they're far more into the into the realistic side of things. On the whole. On the whole, good. All right, uh, let's go to Brutus here, who is asking, is there a superior alien race, and do they know our god? Many of the races know what humans call god, and define superior. If you talk to the the true Dracos, they absolutely are the top of the top. According to them, they are better than everybody. Okay. Okay. Now they worship what they call what they call God is the great Drake. But they the, I mean they think they're superior to everybody and everything. A little unjustified, but what the heck. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Shanna is asking. With what race of aliens do I have? Uh, I already asked that one. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm a little behind here on uh, the questions. <laughs> All right, Big Cat is asking: Has Keith been to an alien planet he did not want to leave? Yeah, don't take this the wrong way, but pretty much anyone I got to. Um, but. Zeta Reticuli was actually quite enjoyable if it weren't for the fact that the, that the flora is absolutely deadly. Right. I did enjoy I did enjoy the, the home world the um Surzovian home world. You know, the unfortunate part is it's a little limited on where you can get to. Mobius, on the other hand, is a nice little place. All right. Carl is asking, Keith, is it safe to quote you? You won't get into trouble, will you? Um, you can quote me all you want. <laughs> you know, the reality is, I don't know if I'll get in trouble. When the CIA showed up, I didn't end up. I didn't end up locked up. Yeah, tell that story. <laughs> tell tell that story because that's very interesting. William, you got to hear this. Yeah, it, it yeah. was funny from my standpoint. This woman showed up. She showed up in town looking for me by name, right, at a, at, a, at a given shop in town here. And I'm not about to tell you where that was. But when she got to me, she, called, she phoned me up because they gave her my number, which was fine. She phones me up, wanted to go for wanted to sit down and talk to me. So I went, yeah, no problem. So I, she came and, and we met. We actually met over at Tim Horton's. And her first comment was that she wasn't connected to anybody. She was just here up here on personal, on, um, you know, on just personal research. Right. So we sat down at, at, in Tim Hortons and I was facing the wall. She was facing away from it, which is abnormal for me to start with. But I looked at her and I says, um, yeah, she started to talk. I says, you do realize we're being listened to and that we're being watched. So she immediately got really agitated and looking around the room. Right. Where are we being watched from? Who's who's watching? And I just shook my head. I says, not in the room. And I pointed out the window and I says, two blocks that direction. Well, this woman that said she was attached to nobody put her hand to, the, to her throat, mumbled something into her throat, and then immediately turns around and goes, are we still being watched? I looked at her. I went, No. I said, the guy got up and left. Right. So we talked for a bit. And at the end of it all, she looks at me and she goes, you know, you haven't told me a thing that our government doesn't know. I says, well, then you got one of two choices. 
She goes, what? I says, you either have to accept the fact I'm sitting on information they don't have, or your government is stupid. Take your pick. Well, she got really agitated. And she goes, you can't call our government stupid. And I says, oh, welcome to Canada. And she says, first and foremost, I'm an English major. I learned how. Secondly, I refer to my own government as stupid. What makes you think I'm not going to see yours the same way? You know, so, I mean, do I have do I have a tendency to put my foot in my mouth? Absolutely. You know, but she, she totally, she accused me on the second time we went out for, she wanted to take me out to a specific spot in town here. And I told her, no, I don't want to go. We'll go to a coffee shop if you want to have a conversation. And she insisted we go out to this one place. So, of course, I'm very edgy. I do not go outside very often. They go very well. And especially not to areas I'm not familiar with. And she, at the end of it, she looks at me and she goes, you know, you're really rude. I said, how so? She goes, when you were talking to me there, you wouldn't even look at me. You were looking all over the place. I says, yeah. I says, you're the one that wouldn't listen to the idea of let's go to coffee. You wanted to go out in the middle of, a, of, the, of the outback, you know, in the middle of the, of the field, on top of a mountain that I know exactly what's under it, right? I said, and you're complaining that, that I was not paying close attention to you? I said, you're the least of my concerns. Right, because where she wanted, uh, where we went to, to sit and talk was all of about five miles away from an underground base. You know, a place that is known as a hot spot in this area. So she was, to say the least, a little less than happy with me. I think my comment about her government didn't really make her happy at all. But since they haven't been back, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> all right, gentlemen, I'm going to get you both to hold on here because we are going to go to break at the top of the hour. Our Keith Andrews is here for the ET Connection. He stops by at the beginning of each month to hang out, talk everything alien, and we got the woo train rolling down the tracks here heading into hour number three. We also say a big thank you to Mr. William Pullen, the man who believes that John McEnroe got jobbed by Bjorn Borg many, many times on the tennis court. Believe you me, yes, William, our resident UFO historian. More of your questions on Spaced Out Radio coming up in Hour 3 next. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. 
All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the story you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, space Travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning bumble. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spice it up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. Hey everyone, I'm John Edwards. And I'm Stacy Edwards. Together we're taking over Saturday nights on Spaced Out Radio where we're going to bring our own experiences of the paranormal and talk to the best people we can find to help bring you answers to your strange tales. We're here to entertain your need for weekend woo! So tune us in at spacedoutradio.com starting at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern where we can all get a little spooky together. Spaced Out Saturday nights right here at spacedoutradio.com. Hello everyone, this is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightlines Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightlines Report on the Spaced Out Radio website and let's figure out what's going on together. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Kicking off the third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. I appreciate each and every one of you tuning us in. Thank you so much to everybody listening in on our terrestrial affiliates across the continent. And on the digital side, on TalkStream Live and Revolution Radio. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Stevadorage. Stevadorage is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocket out to Bumblefoot and listening up in Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire, which we do at the back end of every show. Tonight, we bring in our Keith Andrews for the ET Connection. We kick off usually each month with Keith hanging on out talking aliens, aliens, aliens. It's a lot of fun. We're also joined tonight by William Pullen, our resident UFO historian. One is full woo. The second one, he's as wooless as beige pants. But nonetheless, we love them both here, gentlemen. Welcome back, Mark is going to kick off the audience questions once again. Keith, do aliens have sexual orientation? Absolutely. Some are hetero, some are, are you know, some are, um, what is it called now, dual gender, some are, are asexual. You know, it depends on the race. And, of course, then you've got the ones that literally, uh, what the heck is it called? Oh, um, I was going to call it myopia, but that's wrong. Um, there are races, and I forget what the heck, they, what the actual scientific term is, that literally they divide, much like the amoeba. All right. Let's move on. Joe and his beautiful hair. Want to know about the Mobians? About 40,000 years ago, mankind had evolved to the point of physical manifestation, as in they built everything by thought. And they reached a point where there were somewhere in excess of 10 billion people on the planet. They ended up colonizing Mobius. They, like the mankind getting to space, this is not the first time they've done it. Okay, but about forty thousand years ago, they they um, they colonized Mobius itself. Hence, why we call them Mobians at this point. There we go. All right, let us move on here. Greco is asking on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. Uh, where did he put? Where did I put it now? Of course, I lose it. Uh, are aliens afraid of human alien hunters like Daryl Sims? Um, depends on the alien, but usually they're certainly not happy with them. I mean, let's face it: humans are afraid of human hunters. You know, any any time you start talking about going hunting something, the people in question are seldom happy about it. But 
aliens on the whole are very edgy about humans on the whole because of humans' capacity to actually, number one, manipulate zero-point energy, and number two, mankind's incredible curiosity streak. Got it. All right. Life Dweller is asking, what are your opinions, gentlemen, on CE5 meditation? William, let's start with you. I don't know what to think about it. I don't know. I've not, I've not spent enough time examining those claims and those scenarios to make an educated guess. So I don't know. It's fascinating to ponder the possibilities, but I do not know. Perfect answer. How about you, Keith? Uh, clarification required. CE five. That's the issue of calling the of calling. That's contact, like Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, like the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Well, Fifth Kind is like telepathy and and all that kind of jazz. Well, if we go with telepathy, it absolutely works. Okay, the problem is with telepathy, and this is a massive misconception. Telepathy works fine, except for the fact that unless you speak their language, you're not going to understand, understand what they're thinking. And you've got to understand their culture at the same time. Right. Otherwise, what you'll do is you can pick up their their emotional state, which is a great idea until you realize that their emotions don't necessarily translate into humans. So it's not likely as effective as people claim. Not on the whole. Moving on, Stara, or Star A, is asking, do aliens see Earth as a vacation spot, Keith? Um, more classroom than, than vacation. Or in some cases, quite frankly, hunting ground. Although they don't do the hunting in the, in the cities. Little Marky Spender is asking on Facebook, will the aliens stop us before we become extinct, or will they let us kill ourselves off, then rebuild the planet? If mankind kills itself off, there's no skin off their nose as long as they don't destroy the planet in the first, in the first place. Which is why they shut down nuclear wars. Makes sense. Brutus is asking, do aliens have a sense of humor? Absolutely, although it's a little sick and twisted on occasion. I mean, understand, from a, from a vegan standpoint, um, they find it very comical the way that humans, the way that humans scream when you remove an arm. You know, they haven't quite figured, well, vegans, you got to understand, have no sense of pain. So they've got no concept of the idea of anesthetic or painkillers or anything else. But they do find it entertaining the way that humans make such a fuss out about losing an arm. It's because we can't grow it back like most aliens. Well, actually, most aliens can't grow it back either. The vegans just happen to have that little ability. Right. Stephanie is asking... How busy is Sedona, Arizona with aliens? I'll take that one. I okay. would say I would say ask that question to Melinda Leslie, who will be on the show. Let's see here. She's coming up on May 12th. May 12th. And she has her UFO tour. She has never done a tour. Uh, no, pardon me. I think she's done two tours out of like 2,000 that they have not at all all had any UFOs fly over. And many people believe, including, I believe, Jim Semivan from the To the Stars Academy believes there's some sort of portal over Arizona, Sedona, Arizona, that allows these UFOs to come in and out very, very frequently. It, it is a very strange thing, man. Very strange thing down there that I think we all, if we have an interest in UFOs, need to go check on out because it is that that important down there leah or lee a lee one of those three she's asking were we built as in with nuts and bolts by aliens um no um built technically the answer would be yes but not nuts and bolts 
the because of the of the timing and the and the amount of knowledge that had been forgotten, mankind was actually accelerated from the chimpanzee via via genetic uh, acceleration. But they were built for war, which is half the reason why mankind is as aggressive as it is. But they were built by the ancient races. Or more to the point, by one ancient race. Okay. Mark is asking, who created the ETs? How did they come to be? Um, given the number of different ETs that we've got... <laughs> We can, if we start with a simple one, the Drakes they evolved millennia back. They had expanded their empire out quite a ways, but they ran into a civil war. They ran into a war that severed off two other races, the Sarsazians and the Tormanon, both of which are descended from the Drakes, but both of which evolved in their own right after they got cut off from the Drakes. Then you've got the, the, there's a number of the elementals that simply evolved as time went on. Um, when you look at the, at the merfolk, the merfolk, frankly, were land-based races that returned to the sea. And of course, there's a number of, of dinosaurs that much as it's a well-known fact that well-known fact in certain circles, the dinosaurs evolved into the modern day the modern day um, birds. Some of them did not evolve into birds. There are branches that that evolved into something far different. You know, much like chimpanzees evolved into chimpanzees, they they kept on as chimpanzees, but chimpanzees are now evolving to the point where they're building tools. And they're walking upright. Right. Now, that said, again, we're looking at a number of different races and considering the numbers, the evolutionary patterns are definitively different in a lot of ways. All right. Greco is asking, who's the alien bad boys? Depends on who you ask. <laughs> I mean, I'm not exactly overly fond of, of the tech lag. Mind you, they're the people that find that, that humans are, are kind of a nice little ta- you know, a nice little treat. You know, um, the other issue, the xenon. Now, the xenon are probably one of your more violent type where it comes to humans. They're mechanoids. You know, and they, they are not, and they are not metabolic in nature they are literally mineral in nature with a very definitive downward look on the on on carbon based or life forms very deep question by human carl here who is asking who is our god that is a very long conversation <laughs> Does he exist? The answer is definitively yes. Now, I'm going to go our God based on the idea of the fact that most humans believe in a God. They call them different names, but frankly, they're worshipping the same person or the same entity. But that dates back to way before mankind really has an understanding of. All right, moving on here. Peanut Butter Rolls wants to know if Elon Musk is an alien. What do you think, William? No. He was born and raised on Earth and evolved here. So, although he does have, uh, he he's got a, he's got he's got a rare combination. He's got some cash. He's got access to technology. He's kind of forward thinking, and kind of embraces. I guess the possibilities. Um, I, I guess that's a good thing. I mean, you, people are when you see technology push, push it forward. They have financial backing. That's that's a good thing. I mean, we we mentioned his satellites earlier. You know, uh, that kind of effort may uh, precipitate sort of uh, interaction with aliens. I mean, 
possibility. So, but is him being an extraterrestrial? No, he's he's human. What do you think, Keith? Oh, I absolutely agree. Phenomenal mind, but very Karen. Hmm. All right, let's continue on. Shanna is asking, do aliens think we're just stupid humans? Stupid, no. Naive, absolutely. And way too headstrong for their own good. Or for anybody else's, for that matter. General consensus is that mankind's curiosity is a danger. All right, moving on here. Brutus is asking, is there a planet of women and are men their slaves? Wait a minute, try that again. Is there a planet of women and are men their slaves? He's looking for the Amazonians. And only from a technical standpoint, but not the way that, that humans see the slavery. There are, there are, um, what's the word? The Amazonians are a definitive race. Okay, and they are a matriarchal society. Human and males do take a, a second-class citizen position. Okay, because even in that, the, the males in, in that society are seen as a second rate. They are they are used for like they're they're treated properly. They're not beaten, right? But they are primarily for either they're either for uh, reproductive purposes or in some cases because males have a tendency of being physically stronger. They're used usually for the for menial menial tasks. No male in that society is ever taught to fight. Okay, they are just, it's just completely, it's not even part of their thought process. Of course, in all fairness, since they're not treated poorly, you know, the the Amazonians do not, um, they do not turn around and um, they don't start looking for a way to break out of the cha- the bondage chains, if you will. You know, the reality is if you don't beat your slaves, they don't try and get away. All right, Brutus is asking, are there mermaid people? I always thought we destroyed their home at Bikini Atoll. Uh, the answer is yes, there are. When I refer to the merfolk, that's one of the that's one of the offshoots of them. There's three types of, mer- of merfolk primarily. You see in the sea elves, the sirens, and the and the mermaids. You know, did you was there a lot of damage done over at Bimini? Absolutely. However, that's not the only place they live. All it was right. kind of comical when they decided they were going to start taking humans down to try and discuss things with them. I mean, that it was comical a problem. from my standpoint, from the humans that they tried it with, not so much. Let's move on here. Life Dweller is asking, why didn't aliens help stop Fukushima? Natural process. In other words, in Fukushima was not threatening the planet itself, and the fact that a few humans were dying because of it, well, that was because of humans, um, shall we say, impatience and their ego, and the off-worlders looked at it and went, well, that's going to make a mess for them, but it'll, it'll, clean, it'll be cleaned up eventually. Okay. Moving on here, Peanut Butter Rolls wants to know, Keith, what's it like having dinner with reptilians? Fortunately, they don't force me what they eat. But you want you want mass eaters? Definitely fits the bill. You know, it's not like like with humans because of the way the humans are built. You know, they can keep their lips closed while they chew. While they chew, most reptilians haven't got a prayer of doing that, with one exception: the Chitwari. 
but most of them, I mean, it, it can be a little disconcerting, but fortunately they take it into consideration. That thing about about respect is a very paramount thing, and they do pay attention to what they get to, who they've got for guests. Assuming you're not on the dinner table. If you're on the dinner table, that's another problem. They don't have a lot of respect for you. <laughs> you know. I hear you there. Lee A is asking, so Keith, what you're saying is the ones that built us for war, are they themselves a warring race? Not anymore. At the time, they were. They were having a global war. And they needed some, they needed a race because they were so heavily outnumbered, right? It was such a lopsided fight that they needed the backup, right? But once that particular war was finished with, they abandoned the the concept of outright battle. They still had their their arguments and what have you. But war, and understand when we when mankind talks about war, you talk about grabbing guns and shooting each other, or in the old days grabbing swords and what have you and stabbing each other. These guys just used categorical wipeout. What what you quite frankly what humans call magic, these guys call commonplace, and for that matter, still do. All right, moving on here because we only have about a minute. Let's see if we can get Angel or Nikki's question in here. Keith, what happens to a human who has the ability and uses it to destroy and kill aliens who abduct? That depends on whether or not the aliens that he's killing react. Basically, it boils down to this. If a human has been abducted and another human says, I'm going out to take out the abductor, the alien, the overall alien perspective on it, according to the according to the consortium, is this: if that human has the ability and the guts to go after the alien, knock yourself out. He shouldn't have been caught abducting people. That's right. why the off-worlders are told to do it quietly. And on that note, gentlemen, we got to head to break here on Spaced Out Radio. Our Keith Andrews, the ET Connection, continues. William Pullen is our guest as well tonight, the UFO historian. We love him for all the way down from San Antonio, Texas, where I will be speaking, let's hopefully, fingers crossed, at his Wonderland UFO conference later this summer on August 29th in San Antonio, Texas. So make sure you come on down for that because I want to meet you all. I too. I want to meet you all. Let's pack the place up. More Spaced Out Radio coming up. Looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience has proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. 
You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is watching. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. If you like it hot, real hot then heat up your meals with bumblefoot hot sauce get your bumblefoot hot sauce today the sauce bumblelicious and the four million scoville unit bumble we're going in hot real hot coming out even hotter keep the milk nearby and tantalize your taste buds tonight bumblefoot hot sauce available now at kajans.com we're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Hey Spaced Out Radio fans, it's John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to chivecharities.org and become a donor today. Need that weekend's supernatural fix? Look no further than Spaced Out Saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com. I'm Stacy Edwards. And I'm John Edwards. Each Saturday night, Stacy and I are going to bring you the best in paranormal, cryptids, UFOs, you name it, and we're going there. It's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you. So tune us in every Saturday night on Spaced Out Saturdays starting at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? 
At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes. It's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. want to remind all of you that if you've missed most of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and... Reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio for the show. My personal handle at Dave Scott SOR. Normally at this time we go to the news. Captain Shirk is going to absolutely hang me after this because she worked very diligently. But you can find all of our news spacedoutradio.com. But due to audience request in our chat rooms tonight, and many of you terrestrially who haven't reached out, we still have our Keith Andrews and William Pullen here for the ET Connection. Hanging on out as we continue to roll down the tracks on the Woo Train. Gentlemen, welcome back to the show. We're going to kick things off with Mark here, who is asking, what do aliens do for entertainment, Keith, like television or video games? Again, it really depends on the race. Um their idea of video game is actual is on the whole is literal combat training. I.e., like in the in the Air Force here, you have you have flight simulators and that sort of thing. Well, they use the real simulators, but they don't have. I mean, they do, they do have an interesting game of wall ball, or what amounts to wall ball. It's actually a zero g four. A lot of fun, a lot of, lot of interaction among various races. As far as video, as humans call it, no. They do, on the other hand, have interactive um, photon-generated holographic simulators. Basically, in a, a, a three-dimensional or a um, virtual reality in solid form. The big difference is in their in their videos, in their holographic displays, you can actually get hurt. Well, that sounds fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can see William doing that as long as it doesn't touch his hair. You know, that's the main thing. Well, go team. That's right. That's true. Very true. Abso- absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's continue on. Devin is asking, hi, Keith. What ET race is associated with the Olympians in Greek mythology? That would be the Nordics. And they are very, and the reality of it is they were here, and they were very much what people call the Olympians or the, or the Nordic gods. Were, they were literally the Nords, but the thing was, they got here before the consortium arrived. When the consortium arrived... It said, okay, guys, enough is enough. You're not gods. Get off the planet and quit playing it. Right. It's like, and they literally turned around and said, you've overstepped. Go home. You know, get off the planet, which is why all of a sudden the gods just vanished. Because they were basically told, you're overstepping. You're not allowed to do that. So leave the humans to fend for themselves. You know, absolutely guide them if you can. But enough of this issue of having them worship you. Understandable. All right, continuing on, Corinth wants to know, are eyeballs a delicacy to some uh, aliens? Absolutely. But then, in all fairness, eyeballs are a delicacy to some humans as well. I mean, let's face it, eyeballs do have the advantage of being soft. You know, and depending on the pigmentation in it with certain, with certain races, different colored eyes have different flavors. 
I hear you there. I hear you there. All right, let's move on here. Greco is asking, can aliens summon human ghosts, spirits, or demons? Oh, well, <laughs> okay. Some of them can talk to them, certainly. There is no such thing as a human demon. There are other words for humans that are that way inclined, but that the word is not demon. Demon is another race altogether. And you can call on a demon all you want. If it doesn't want to come, you're pretty much who. It's kind of like it's kind of like summoning a teenager most of the time. You know, they come sometimes when you call them, but not often. Or summoning a cat. Yeah. But can some of the races, some of the individuals in the races, do it? The answer is yes. All right. I guess that's a good one. Let's uh, see what else we got here as we continue the ET connection on Spaced Out Radio. Well, let's see here. Overbuilt is asking, how many alien kids do you have via forced or willingly made breeding sessions, Keith? That I'm aware of? None. That said, I treat all of the kids the same way. So I get along with them. I just, as far as I'm aware, I don't have any. Other than the only two kids I know of that I've got are both human. They both live here on Earth. One with me, one not. And they're good kids, too. I've met them. you got great kids, man. You really do. Not a problem. Not a problem whatsoever. Okay, let's let's move on here. Nikki is asking, what kind of aliens... Or what race of aliens, pardon me, are the ones who are protective of human children, if not a race of alien? Is there a being which does that? If so, what is the name of that being? That It's not a, a specific individual. There are a number of different individual off-worlders that will protect kids. Okay. And it, in all fairness, it really depends on the connection that the that the human has with that alien most of the time. Nothing like having a human body or a, an alien bodyguard to protect your kids. How do we know? Well, that's the neat little catch. Is most people don't actually know. They, they chalk them up to guardian angels or something to that effect. And Jonas are known for are known for jumping in to help people. And yes, the and Jonas do have the ability to to modify the optic range so you don't necessarily see them. The and Jonas, by the way, is the actual name for what you know as angels. All right, Corrance wants to know, William, have there ever been any aliens show up at the Wonderland UFOs Festival in San Antonio that you put on? <laughs> um, let's see, I need to be scientifically objective with this. <laughs> there were several humanoids dressed up as aliens, um, but if there are actually any flesh and blood extraterrestrials, I was unaware. But I would like to think there might have been. There were some characters there that were a little out there. So um, I'd like to say yes. I don't know, but I'd like to say yes. Now, oh, upcoming this year's man. festival, with more attendees, I see the chances of going up. Yeah, that's a scientific observation board. Mark is asking, Keith, how can we tell fellow humans from aliens? Um, well... Oddly enough, and this is going to sound way too complicated, they feel different. There's a different energy pattern around uh, what you would call their aura looks different than uh, with with alien races than it does with humans. Even hybrids have a different a different aura to them. Now, as far as is there a way that that, if you will, the average everyday Joe can tell them apart. Not that I'm aware of. And by the way, just because somebody is a little out there or a little weird does not necessarily make them alien. Of course. All right. Greco is asking on Twitter, 
at hashtag spaced out radio. Do the aliens prefer the humans or the dinosaurs? That depends. Humans are lousy. They make lousy mounts. Some of the dinosaurs make really good ones. You know, but there are there are some races that prefer that. Excuse me, prefer the 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 dinosaurs as to the humans. You know, depending on again, it really depends on who you're dealing with. Very nice. See, you gotta understand is that. Aliens is such a wide array, you know, that you end up with a little bit of a, a bit of an issue there. Far out, man. Far out. Brutus is asking, so if we pluck the eyes out of evil people, they won't go to waste. We could feed the aliens instead. Well, technically, the answer would be yes. The problem is, how do you differentiate between a good person and an evil one? So I would not recommend that as a as a trading commodity. I got you. All right. Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. She is asking, have you ever, Keith, stepped off a spaceship and free fell and back to Earth? Apparently this <laughs> happened to her. Well, I wouldn't necessarily call it stepped off. But a number of years ago, actually about five, I was dropped and then missed the bed. And yeah, it was a free fall. My head caught the, I, I had a hexagonal table beside my bed. My head hit, my forehead hit one corner, my shoulder hit another, and my knee hit the ground so hard it dislocated the leg. You know, so have I, have I free fallen before? Yeah, just not from the height that you're referring to. All right. Moving on here. I got to say, I only had that once where I was dropped in my bed. Like, literally, I came to about a couple feet off my bed and then slammed right down on top of my bed. That was freaky. It's pretty disconcerting, isn't it? It's freaky cool because you you automatically know some whether it was aliens or whether it was ghosts or demons or whatever it was or the garden gnomes that something weird just happened when you wake up in the air and you fall back into your bed. Yeah, it's a little a little hard to argue the point at that point. Oh, dude, it was one of the weirdest things I've ever had, man. Weirdest things I've ever had. Well, I'll tell you what so much if I had if they hadn't missed the bed altogether. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, what you got slammed on the floor? Well, like I said, my my left shoulder caught the bed. My left shoulder and leg caught the bed. My forehead caught the caught one corner of the desk. My right shoulder caught the other, and oh, nice. my right knee hit the ground so hard it dislocated the leg. Man. It's terrible. Terrible. Yeah. And poor poor William sitting there like, and gee, nothing cool happens to me. I never get to fall out of oh, spaceships. <laughs> I never get. I'll tell you, though, when that happened to me, I it rattled me. It rattled me. Yeah. Like, I wasn't freaked out, but it just, like, there is that moment, guys, and, and Keith, you'll understand, and people who've experienced will understand, but for those who, who don't, there is that moment when you are free falling into your bed or just back where it is scary because you're like, what the heck am I doing up here? Like I was looking at my ceiling. I was looking yeah. at my ceiling and, you know, I mean, you fall as fast as you can fall, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know the, the scientific speed to that. But... Second for second. Yeah. If you I... terminal velocity. Yeah. All right. I mean, it's just weird. It's absolutely weird when all of a sudden you are wide awake, you hit the bed, and all you just pause and and lay there for a couple of seconds, and you sit and you're just like, "Did this just happen?" 
because you're wide awake. You just don't fall back asleep. You're wide awake, and you're like, did this just happen? I can't believe this just happened. What just happened? Oh, it's freaky. It is absolutely it's freaky. freaky. That's where I hit the ground. I just bust out laughing. Well, you've done it once or twice. Let's yeah, go to... I was not let's expecting to, to bed this time, though. Let's go to uh, Peanut Butter Rolls here, who is asking, Keith... Next time you go for a ride, can you take a camera with you so you can get a picture? You know, I can't take the camera with me today and get a picture of anything. I can't get the dang thing, the dang thing to work most of the time. But it's not like they like they stop and say, "Hey, take a picture." True, true. Corins is asking. Are there any vegan aliens to follow up? Do vegan aliens judge those who are not vegan? Oh, that's funny. That is funny. It is, but no. Yeah. Categorically, when you're dealing with other races, they look at each race and go, no, they are what they are. Right. But are there, depends on your definition of vegan. I mean, you've got pretty much every walk of life and every diet capable. Now, myself, I don't entirely know what the entire diet is of a vegan, aside from the fact that humans are not designed to be that way. Sparkles is asking, what do the SARS or the Caesarians look like? Their size, color, facial features, hands, feet, are they thin, heavy, muscular, and how do they communicate? How long do they live? What kind of clothing do they wear? Well, there's a whole pile for you. Seven and a half to eight and a half feet tall, high density bones. They 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 um, evolved on a high density planet, so they are armored. Heavy armor on the on the major muscle areas, smaller muscle, smaller, um, finer muscle or finer armor on the hands and feet and what have you. You know, on the joints, communicate via growls and hisses, essentially, or. In the case of external, they have a, they've got a colored, a uh, photoreactive collar that they use for communication when, when they're outside, when you can't hear what they're saying because of the winds. As far as their hands, three-fingered, three-fingered, one thumb, heavy talon. You know, they are strong enough. They will. They cannot use standard human human technology because they'll just destroy it. Um, to give you an idea of their muscle power, a standard medieval mace boiled down to a two-pound ball of, of metal on the end of a stick. Strazazians use medieval weaponry for personal combat, but their mace is approximately the same size as a, as a medicine ball. Oddly enough, in in the second book of the of the Elder Bucking Chronicles that I'm writing, the front cover has a, has an actual Srazavian on it. Very cool. Very cool. All right, we've only got about two minutes here, guys, before we gotta start to wrap things up here. We let's get to Brutus's question. Keith, what are the ones I'm assuming alien species that look like giant yellow jackets? What are they called? I know the ones, and that one is one that I was just actually wearing. Just, I think those ones are in in the second volume here. And, and giant, well, I guess you classify them as giant. I mean, they're six feet long, but I'm just trying to remember what the name is. I know who you're referring to, and they are they are hive minded, literally. Like they are, they they communicate in a very different fashion. And if you know anything about the way bees communicate, these guys do essentially the same thing. Right. But they are not aggressive. All right. Let's sneak in one more question here. Greco is asking, do you know anyone who has been returned to the wrong house by aliens? That's a good way to end this one tonight. I know of a few that did. Like, do, are they people that I personally hang around with? No. But I do know people of people that have been returned. I know of one person that was returned to the wrong country. And I created a bit of a That would be interesting. 
William yeah, Pullen? Get him home without any ID. William Pullen, give uh, us a quick shout too. out. Give us a quick shout out for Wonderland <laughs> UFO. F- uh, oh, you oh, know, too. <laughs> you know of two. Who? Yeah, I have two. I have two, two abduction cases in the early 2000s where the abductee was returned to the next door neighbor's house. Oh my like goodness! Cities. One is that Tony, one in uh, Carville, Texas. So, oh wow! So they returned to the wrong house. Whether that was on purpose or not, I don't know. So, but no, it's out for the One Nine UFO Festival that's here in San Antonio, Texas, August 29th of this year. Uh, it will not be canceled. It might be postponed because of the coronavirus issue. But as of right now, it's a free event Saturday, April. I mean April, August 29th. There's a public meet and greet with all the speakers. Uh, the day before, which would be August 28th. Uh, my good friend Dave Scott is one of the speakers. I'll be one of the speakers there. So it's a free event, indoors, free parking. If you're in Texas, come on out. All right. Thank you, William. Thank you, R. Keith, for coming on the show. Don't forget, you can go to R. Keith's website, Intervoice Enterprises, to get his books right there. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everybody participating in our chat rooms tonight on Spreaker, YouTube, LGAB, Revolution Radio, Facebook, the SOR Space Travelers Club on our website, and on Twitter, the snarking was fantastic at hashtag spaced out radio all night long. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for sharing your evening with us because together, my friends, we own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Have a wonderful night, everybody. It's been a lot of fun. We're going to do it all again very, very soon. I hope you come ride the woo train with us. Good night.